gentlemen, thank you for coming. At this time, we'd like to call to order the Monday, September 12, 2016 um, Board of Education meeting for Guthrie Public Schools. We have roll call, please. Pennington. Here. Smedley. Here. Bennett Johnson. Here. Davis. Here. Salee. Here. Pearson. Here. Watts. Madam President, we have a quorum. Yes. Okay, let's everyone join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag and of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'd like to take a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, we have the presentation for our certified and support employees of the month. Strobel. Well, we have a first tonight. Um, one of the nominations uh, came in from a staff that uh, was going to be out of town, so she actually filmed and wanted to present. So we will do that one last. D will help me get that set up. But um, because of a new school year, uh, I want to um, tell everybody that uh, kind of the process we go through, we have a committee um, that uh, receives the votes and then they rank those and send them to me. And so the committee this year is Candy Webb and Charity McPeak to represent the support. And then the certified is Kim Hingle and Kylie Wooderson. And so anyway, I appreciate them because it takes a while to read through these and then um, rank those. So um, First, we would like to start with our support employee of the month, which will get a $25 gift card and a plaque. And Maggie Wade from the high school. And Moses, would you guys come up? You want to take a picture first? Yeah. We'll take a picture second. Okay. <clears throat> Moses and I have been to high school together for a long time. And I just feel like he is one of those core group of people that would our school continue without him? Yes. But would we want it to? Absolutely not. He's hardworking, dedicated, and this man goes above and beyond. And I think Chris would agree with me. We all kind of listen when he's called on the walkie-talkie because we're waiting. And any time they say, Moses, come to the cafeteria. Or, Moses, go in the locker room. We're all waiting and we hear, on my way. That's how reliable and dependable he is. We know exactly what he's going to say. Thank you, Moses. time says I can't keep a secret and I did a very good job this time and so um, Jessica is um, gone uh, but she's going to present and Miss Walters will you please come up <laughs> hi guys as a mom of four kids I've been hoping for years that the district would centralize elementary enrollment. Carmen Walters took on this project and she executed it tremendously. She was present before, during, and after to make sure everyone knew exactly what they needed to be doing. And what really touched me about the whole thing is that she personally thanked each person that helped with enrollment. Um, Carmen went from table to table and made sure everyone knew that they were valued and that she appreciated them. She also called afterward to follow up and see what we could do better next year, and I admire that so much about her. Um, when people are willing to listen to constructive criticism, they don't, um, they don't just care about themselves, they care about everybody in the district and what's best for the parents, and I really value that about Carmen. In addition to that massive project, Carmen has been filling in for Marsha Holderman in her really difficult absence. And I've spoken with her several times regarding different situations and every time she's calm and collected 
And um, I think that's so awesome that in a time that must be so stressful for her, she just keeps her cool and, you know, keeps those heels on and just keeps marching <laughs> through. So um, between covering her own desk and covering someone else's, she maintains a can-do attitude. And it's not just I can do it, it's we can all do it together. And I love that about her. And she's very deserving of this month's um, award. And so um, congrats, Carmen. And I can't wait to see you whenever I get back from my mission trip. Congrats. We have none. Uh, comments to the board by board members. Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. Okay. Um, this is going to be fairly brief, but it's uh, it's good news. Uh, I would say that the uh, in my five years that I've been uh, in this district, this is absolutely the smoothest start we've had. Part of that uh, I attribute to a lot of work that our transportation department did prior to the uh, beginning of school to make it very smooth and I, I want to applaud them. Uh, Cody Tom, uh, Thompson is holding uh, holding that their feet to the fire but also he's holding a lid on all that because as we all know transportation in this district is very challenging and that was his first opening of school and so we did a, a remarkable job there. Um, we had uh, kids where we were supposed to be and for the most part, on time, and, uh, and things have gone very smooth since uh, since those first few days as well. Football team's off to a good start. They have a 2-0 record with a uh, unable to finish game uh, Friday night in Ponca City. I'm not sure if we're going to count that as a loss or just as a non-played game. I think we'll, we'll just call it 2-0 as far as I'm concerned <laughs> uh, and, and move on. Uh, we go to Carl Albert on the 23rd, so we're off this week, and then we go, we go down and play the uh, Titans. Uh, our student count is, is very similar to the numbers that we ended 2015-16 with, and how that will look when midterm adjustments come out and for funding purposes is uh, yet to be seen, but uh, because I still, I've said that there may be a chance that there are fewer students in the state this year because of the economic crisis that we've encountered. Um, and it's too early to tell on that. We'll know some, some better information after the October 1 child counts are in the statewide, which will take a while to, get, to tabulate. Um, the other thing that I wanted to give you an update on, the State Department of Education will see, receive an additional $40.2 million in additional funding from the discovery that cuts last spring were too deep by the Office of State Finance. And how those will be distributed by the State Department of Ed is yet to be determined. Um, I've been told that much of the money will go into the funding formula uh, rather than backfill the line items from the activities fund where they were cut. And the areas that were cut, uh, alt-ed, alternative education, uh, textbooks, um, professional development, there were, there were a lot of cuts in those uh, line items. And the kind of what I'm hearing right now is that they will put that into the funding formula, which uh, when they do that, there will be districts that are winners and losers in that uh, with the, the amount of money that since we are right around 65% state aid, we would probably be a winner in that in the sense that we will get some money back. But they've also said that they're going to put some money into some of those line items. And so we really don't know yet what that's going to look like. We expect to hear something from the State Department hopefully pretty soon. Um, it's, you know, the, the governor kicked around a special session to talk about how they were going to use that money and, and uh, decided against it, of course, and, 
And so now with the 140 million, 40.2 of which goes back into education, we're going to have to, it will be up to the State Department to, to determine how that money is, is uh, allocated. But uh, Dennis and I have both, uh, we've, we've played around with the, uh, the, the potential of it and, uh, and there's, there's a lot of different things that could happen. So there's still a lot of variables out there. So, so the, the ultimate uh, bottom line to that is the, the crazy school finance of what was 2015-16 school year continues to be crazy and still <laughs> unknown and, uh, and we're still feeling those effects. Um, and that's my report. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number nine, the presentation on ACT High School and College Success Report for the 2015-2016 by uh, Mr. Ogle. Um, Laura what let these warm up. Um, one of the things I will say is this is the 2016 class ACT report. It's not the whole school. It's the graduating class of last year. Um, no matter when they took the test, it's the last test that they took is what they count um, on this report. And so if they only took it as a sophomore, that's the only report. If they took it five times, they're going to take that fifth time and report um, for this ACT report. start off our five-year trend of how many students we've tested um, as you look there 2012 we were 106 last year we talked about you know we were gradually increasing those and trying to get more students to take the ACT um, the state stepped in and are funding all juniors that are <coughs> present that day um, when they test and they will pay for that one ACT and so next year I know that we tested over a hundred and I think it was 168 students um, that were juniors this year free of charge at the school and so next year you're going to see that number even increase more but um, we did go up a little bit from last year on uh, students tested from 137 to 145. Our English five-year trend um, as you can see um, we go back to 2012 we've, we've been kind of fighting trying to get right up to the state average um, the blue is the district and in the red there is the state average um, we were climbing we were catching um, Last year I talked a little bit about we were kind of unique as the state average was going down, we were going up. And so our graduating class in 2015 was almost right there um, at the state average and then last year's seniors we dropped a little bit. Um, still real close, we're less than a point away, um, but uh, we're, we're still trying, we're not happy with those, we wanted to be at least state average or higher. Um, some classes, you know, um, do a little bit better on the ACT and so anyway that's the English five-year trend the math um, once again if you start looking um, you can see that the trend is downward um, for the state average um, last year in 2015 we climbed above that average um, in 2016 we dropped um, and so we are a full um, percentage point away um, from the state average in math last year um, reading um, once again, we talked about it, you know, we were kind of dropping as a state average, we were climbing, and we went from 2014, 2015, we were climbing, trying to reach that last year's group, a little bit lower again, uh, still, you know, less than a point away um, from the state average, and so at, at 20.6, um, close, just not there, um, and so I know Mr. LeGrand uh, has a slide here in a minute, he'll kind of talk about some things we're going to do to try to um, get to the state average or above where we want to be. Um, science, looking there again, um, state average was going down um, over the last three years. Um, we we kind of hit a, where we were kind of going up, and that was the one we talked about. Our biology scores um, are really low with the EOI, but our ACT, we're right at state average, which doesn't compare very good. But uh, last year in 2016, um, we did drop a little bit from where we were at the previous year. Um, you know, still, once again, we're close to that state average, but we want to be at or above it. Then the composite of all of them together, um, <coughs> you can see that uh, 
kind of the same trend, states going down. I think um, we can talk about that is there's more students taking the test now, um, and so that's, that's bringing those scores down. Um, but we did get um, one percentage point from um, last year. And so one of the things um, I presented at the curriculum committee was we compared and called to ask some different schools with our same demographics what their scores were. They didn't want to, to talk about that on camera. Um, if you'd like to see those, they're still presenting theirs, and it's not like the, they care what they are. But people with our same demographics, um, scores were comparable. Um, and so uh, I know the curriculum committee, they can talk to it a little bit. You know, if you guys have any questions about that, or if you want to catch me off, you know, when we're done, we can talk a little bit about those. But, you know, we were comparable. We wanted to see where we were at with some of the schools that are our same size and same demographics to see um, where we were. Are we way off, you know, because we did drop, but uh, so did they. And so that was one thing. Um, I'll ask Mr. LeGrand to come up here a little bit. And we go over this last slide that I have on here, and then we'll answer any questions that you, you have. Yeah, one thing that, that I'm really pleased with uh, is the fact that we've really made a conscientious effort to increase the rigor of our curriculum. And, you know, we all know that to be college career ready, you need to be able to take courses that prepare you for those particular classes and to be successful in college. And since we, this will actually be the first year that uh, we will have uh, had a graduating class under the new Val South policy. And according to our new Val South policy, you have to take at least one AP or advanced class. An advanced class is considered a concurrent enrollment course, which you get college credit for, uh, from each of the four core subject areas in order to be considered the valedictorian. And this slide right here is a testament to the fact that we have more students taking more AP classes and concurrent classes than we've ever had. And if you compare last year to this year, and you can see minor, plus or minus there on the right, uh, the red means we have a few less. But you look at our AP English 4 class, we actually have eight more students in AP English 4 this year. AP Biology, we've gone from four to 11. Uh, so that's an increase of seven. AP Environmental Science, we've increased uh, from three last year, we have 47 this year. Part of that is because we've actually allowed freshmen to take AP Environmental Science, and uh, we have a big enrollment there, which is very uh, encouraging to me. And then AP History, we're the same number. AP Government, we're up four. AP Calculus, we're down two. But if you look at concurrent enrollment uh, from last year to this year, we actually have nine more students that are concurrently enrolled in college classes. and so. Part of that reason that calculus number is not real high is because a lot of those students will take college algebra concurrently. And so uh, if you look at the net gain from 16 to 17, you can see overall we're up 64, which I think is a, a very positive sign. And, and I've always been a big believer you get out of an education what you put into it. And if you prepare yourself by taking these higher level classes and AP classes and concurrent classes, then obviously you're going to be more prepared to do well and be successful in college. And so I think what we're doing uh, is obviously the data supports that and you know it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to see a, a big jump from one year to the next. But yet <clears throat> as we increase our AP and concurrent enrollment, I, I expect to definitely see improvements on our ICT scores because obviously that's the ACT is a reflection of how you are, how prepared you are for college. And in this case, the more concurrent classes and AP classes, the more prepared the students should be, which in fact should, and you should begin to see increases in our ICT scores over the next several years. But I'm, I'm really pleased with this, and uh, that was the intent of changing our policy, is to get more students prepared by taking rigorous <coughs> courses than just worrying about a grade that they're making in a class. So uh, hopefully this will uh, lead to some improved or marked improvement on our, our ACT scores in the upcoming years. <coughs> One of the things, uh, Mr. O, <coughs> compare that data from the, our peer districts, uh, it, it, everything was trending, the way we trended were, was the same way they were trending. And I, I wanted to see if we were an outlier or if that was a, a common thread. Um, we want this to be better. We want improvement from this. 
uh, one of the things that I cautioned the board and everyone two years ago about was as we work toward getting more kids to take the test, one of the hazards could be lower scores because we are trying to capture more students that will take that test. Now we are in a situation where with the State Department paying for more testing, uh, we're going to have more juniors taking this test. But remember also that this was a snapshot that is a fairly limited snapshot of our students and is not, does not have the data of all our ACT scores from all of our students as we as they prepare because of the juniors. This is just the seniors, remember? And Doug might reemphasize that. Yeah, it's just the class of 2016 seniors that graduated. Yeah. Like you said, <clears throat> the most recent score. So sometimes they'll take it four or five times and their fifth time not getting necessarily their best score. Um, and sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So you, you're going to get an average there that might be a little deviant from what they actually scored their best score was, but it's, it's pretty close. Any questions for Mr. Grandrock? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 10, the consent agenda. All of the following items, uh, those of a routine nature, normally approved by board meetings, will be approved by one vote unless any board member desires to have a separate vote on any or all of the following items. Motion. I'd move to approve the consent agenda, but to pull items item 10A. Second. Any discussion? Second. Okay. We call for local. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, item 10A, the minutes for regular meeting for August 8th. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Stein. Pearson. Yes. Five ayes and one abstention. Agenda item 11 recommendation, consideration, and action upon the gifted and talented committee for the 2016-2017 school year. This is on page 61 of your board packet. Uh, this item and the next item on these two committees require board ratification on an annual basis and uh, the, uh, it was reviewed by the curriculum committee. <coughs> Ms. Woodruff is here to answer any questions you might have. I make a motion that we approve the Gifted and Talented Committee for 2016-17. Second. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 11B, the recommendation, consideration, and action upon Professional Development Committee for the 2016-2017 school year. This recommendation is on page 62 of the board packet, and Ms. Walters is present to answer any questions you might have. I move we approve the Professional Development Committee for 2016-17. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Item 11C. Recommendation, consideration, and action upon the contract with the Stacy Group for the Architectural Services for 2016-2017. Page 63 through 72 of your packet contains the, the uh, contract, and the uh, the only changes that were noted was uh, the dates on this. It requires annual approval. Um, it's uh, they're already under contract for the projects that we have, but if we identify any additional projects that the board wants to review or or go forward with it, we already have a contract in place for them to do that. That's why we ratify this annually. I make a motion that we approve the contract with the Stacy Group for Architectural Services for 2016-17. Second. Any discussion? 
please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero knees. Agenda item 11D, a recommendation consideration action upon the memorandum of understanding between the Reading and Technology Center and Guthrie Public Schools for supplementing funding for Guthrie Middle School Gateway to Technology Programs for eighth grade students for 2016 and 2017. This is an annual item that we bring to the board for ratification uh, and there is a grant involved with this and I believe if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Ogle, is that 50000 Yeah, 25000 a semester. Okay. Um, and this uh, it requires annual ratification by our board. It has already been approved by the Meridian Technology Center. I move we approve the memorandum of understanding between Meridian Technology Center and the Guthrie Public Schools for supplemental funding for Guthrie Middle School Gateway to Technology Programs for 8th grade students for 2016-17. Second. Any discussion? Roll call please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. Agenda item 11E, recommendation, <coughs> consideration, and action to approve Ms. Carmen Walters as the authorized official for Guthrie Public Schools to sign any federal claims for reimbursement from the State Department of Education. This is uh, items E and F were both um, we, we believe this is a new requirement. We're not, uh, we're not sure about this, but uh, it requires board approval so that uh, she can print. sign off on the federal claims as our representative, and then the same thing for special education projects for item F. Recommend approval. I make a motion that we approve Carmen Walters as the authorized official for GPS to sign any federal claims for reimbursement from the State Department of Education. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 11F, recommendation, consideration, action to approve Ms. Aldana Woodruff as the authorized official for GPS to sign any edu special education reimbursement claim for the State Department of Education. For projects 621, 623, 625, 641, and 642. Again, this is a, a, apparently a new requirement uh, that uh, requires board approval. Recommend that you approve it. I make a motion that we approve Ms. Eldana Woodruff as the authorized official for GPS to sign any special education reimbursement claims from the State Department of Education for projects 621, 623, 625. 641 and 642. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Student item 11G, recommendation, consideration, action upon the 2016-2017 estimate of needs as prepared by Putnam and Company, PLLC, and 2015-2016 financial statement and authority to publish the same. Mr. Schultz. There's a summary page for this huge entire 50 page document on page 77. And it pretty much takes everything that's in that document and boils it down to one page. So if we can look at that page uh, and start with the general fund and it's just a comparison of the current year and prior year as to what our total appropriation is for this year because of the reduced <coughs> fund balance and the reduced estimate of miscellaneous revenue for this year that we're in as compared to last year our total appropriation that was calculated by the auditors will also go down uh, it's very like I mean these these numbers are going to be pretty uh, pretty close to hopefully actual collections and we know what the revenue picture is in the state right now so it's just logical that we won't have as much money to spend this document is not our operating budget it just sets our legal spending limits our total that we can spend that's why it's done independently by an auditor rather than say me doing this by myself uh, it keeps some independence there so that I can't 
do anything I wanted to do to bump that budget up <coughs> and that legal spending limit. Uh, the building fund is next, and uh, the carryover there increased by $74,000 uh, because the property valuations increased. Our ad valorem estimate of ad valorem revenue for next year is also up. So our total appropriation in the building fund is up by 106000 we're, we're, So we're, this will come into play here in a few minutes. We're down estimated by a million dollars, right? Uh, yes, it's, it's the yes. estimations. When you look at miscellaneous revenue, they look at three things. Miscellaneous revenue, ad valorem revenue, and then our fund balance. The fund balance portion of it is not an estimate. We know what our fund balance was to start the year. And it was down $750,000. Those miscellaneous revenues that are estimated to be collected next year are down by $520,000. But our ad valorem tax collections are estimated to be up because property valuations went up. So if we collected our normal 96% collection rate, which is we usually have about a 4% tax collection delinquency each year, then that's what that should generate. So. Uh, uh, yes, the net effect of all of that is a million dollars less that would be available to spend, and that's providing we don't have a revenue shortfall after, you know, a little later in the fall or in the spring, which I think everybody feels is entirely possible still. Uh, child nutrition fund and is basically just an operational fund. That's it, it really doesn't do anything but sustain itself. Uh, it's a little bit different in the way it's presented because it takes into account in the prior year a supplemental appropriation that we did late in the year because we always over collect what's estimated. That estimate that the auditor has to make is fairly conservative. For us to have enough cash through the year right at the end to finish up, we have to have them come back in or I, I can do it. And, do a supplemental appropriation and have the county approve that for whatever we collect in excess of the original estimate. So at the end of the year last year we did that and so it looks like that our total budget is down $72,000 but at the end of this year we'll do that same thing. We'll, we'll bring into the budget everything that we over collect and it'll just kind of even itself out by the end of the year. But we run pretty close so it usually takes everything we collect that we have to spend to break even. That's why that's necessary. And every June, you probably remember you do a supplemental appropriation <coughs> for the child nutrition fund. Uh, the next fund on there is the school age care fund, and there was no activity whatsoever since we turned our school age care program over to the YMCA. So that uh, fund had no activity in it. And then the final fund is the sinking fund, and this is the first year in several years we've had a, a tax levy in the sinking fund because of our new bond issue. And our total millage will be 14.93 mills, which gets us below our target a little bit. We promised to hold the millage at 15 to 15 and a half mills or below, and, and we've had enough at warm growth that we kind of exceeded that a little bit. So the millage is less than, than what we thought it might be. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, uh, estimate of needs as prepared by Putnam and Company PLLC for 2015-16. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Agenda item 11H, recommendation, consideration, and action upon appointment of Dr. Mike Simpson or his designee to serve as a representative for the review committee of the tax increment district. This is something that uh, we received the official notification from our county commissioner, uh, Mike Pearson, on this, uh, this last week, and we got able to get this into the agenda. You remember we did this the last time when we had the TIF district and uh, it uh, talking with our uh, attorney felt it was a 
best interest of everyone that the board have a motion with minutes that authorizes me or another staff member, which uh, in this case I'm recommending that it be me to attend these meetings. But I always put in there the designee so that if in the event that I'm on my deathbed or something like that, Dennis or somebody else could go in my absence and still have the same uh, authority. Um, I will, you have my, uh, know that I will represent the interests of the district and I will represent the interests that you guys present to me. Uh, but generally the meetings are in the morning and, uh, and they vary at, at, on when, the, when they are as well. Can we have a discussion before we make motions? Sure. It's about this agenda item, sure can. It's about this agenda item, so it'll come back. We have the county recently just passed a tax specifically for this. The county, uh, the citizens of Logan County voted for a sales tax for the county commissioners to build roads. We're looking at a budget that's starting us off a million dollars estimated up to a million dollars in the home from last year where we had to lose teachers and police classrooms and I would urge the board to seriously consider sending a representative Mike with the mission of saying we're opposed to this dip we supported the first one and I'm a wholehearted uh, uh, support of TIFs when they fall into a need that we have. But we, they want to take our ad valorem money for the next five years and spend uh, three quarters of a million dollars to build new roads and intersections where they're already going to be, in my opinion, construction occurring because there's a number of houses down there slated to be built. And in one specific location, 80 are already plat or plotted or platted to be constructed. And under some of the statute that we're using, uh, there, the TIF is designed to encourage or create construction or advancement of improvement of an area uh, that wouldn't be improved or constructed or advanced if not for the TIF. It's but uh, they call it a but not for but clause. Four. But four clause. And I, I urge the board to really take a look at this, even if you have to table it or point Mike on there and before he goes. But I, I, I ask you to look before this district gives up money that it's entitled to and needs to pay these guys and to give them the raise and stuff they deserve to build a road for five years when the county sold the hospital and we're to build roads with that money you guys remember that right that's what they told us went to the people and asked for a tax to build roads with or at least that's what they told us and now they want us to give up ad valorem money to put you know one more kid in the classroom but four if they're already plotted and already going to be built down there these very nice homes then it's not legitimately a TIF area under the state statute but four wouldn't happen if it wasn't for the TIF. Am I correct, Mike? If those houses are already planning, if there's already construction people have already bought the property and they're going, I don't want this board in this district to subsidize a bunch of brand new quarter million dollar homes in Southern Logan County. And I'd say we encourage the vote no on this all the way from the start to the finish. And that's just my <coughs> Thank you. One, one thing I will add, um, ultimately it's the decision of the county commissioners, but this committee is, is put together to advise them of the different entities and what their interests are. And so that's the purpose of the committee. And so, but the, but uh, the ultimate decision will rest with the county commissioners. In the, in the committees made up of what's called stakeholders. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Who else is on the committee? The stakeholders are everybody that has a stake down there. The fire district or the EMS district, the, uh, the health department. Meridian Technology. Meridian yeah, Technology. And, uh, but they want, and, and when I talk, I talked to the county commissioner today. And this is what, 
to paraphrase what he told me, well, I put a lot of bells and whistles in there. You know, we could get by with a lot less than what we what I gave you, but you know, I'm asking for three quarters of a million dollars to do two two miles of road. I said, how much will it cost? Well, you know, you know what are we going to take out? That's kind of you know, what do we take this out? We take that out. And I said, have a good day. Yeah, I'm going to second what Terry said, and Terry, it was very well said, very accurate, and I agree 100 percent. First off, first off, I have absolute confidence Mike will represent the district in our best interest. But I am opposed to the county commissioners taking new ad valorem growth and funding construction of roads. The county passed a two cent sales tax, or a quarter cent sales tax for roads two years ago. A quarter cent sales tax for the county is roughly a million dollars a year. As far as I'm concerned, the commissioners can use that money to pay for roads and in a time of unprecedented education cuts in the state, the last thing they should be doing is taking ad valorem growth and paying for county roads. Now I know, we, you know, I, I fully support appointing Mike as our representative because I know he'll make the right recommendation. But I think as a board, it's appropriate for us to voice our opinions. And I hope, and I, I'd welcome the rest of you guys, you know, the, Add, add to it, or but that's my personal feelings. I had not visited with Terry in advance of the meeting, and what he said tonight is 100% accurate. And I agree with it. I'd ask you to at least call the county commissioner and talk to this guy. I'd ask you to read the state statute on this TIF district. The but for clause, in my opinion, disqualifies this area because it's already going to be constructed. These developers have already bought the property. That area down there is going to grow, but remember what we said when we went to these people to vote, for, ask for a bond issue. This growth is going to help offset some of our bond. <coughs> we, we knew that new growth was coming down there around that school. Well, those prices of that land has went skyrocketed down there. The prices of those homes are going to be, there is, there is projected by some today to be 2,000 homes south of Seward Road in Logan County in the next year to two years. I haven't verified those figures. I got those figures from county commissioners today, but there are like two or 300 already scheduled to be built right in that area. We can't afford with a million dollar short of budget to give our money away to someone who sold the hospital, someone who got a tax pass, and, and we have to rely on what we get from the state. I, I, I encourage you to send Mike, but send him with a mission. Respectfully, I ask you guys to look at that. We can't afford it. This district can't afford it. So just a reminder to the board members, this is regarding the action to appoint Dr. Mike Simpson as the, or his designee to serve as a representative on the review committee, not the actual TIF discussion. Very well said. Thank you. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve Mike as the district's representative for the review committee. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. Agenda item number 12, the proposed executive session for the purpose of discussing employment of personnel, FMLA request, resignation or separation from employment, and transfer of position requests. All is set out in the personnel reports and discussion of extra duty assignments as listed in the 2016-2017 disclosure of which would Disclosure of which information would violate the confidentiality requirements of state and or federal law, all pursuant to 25 Oklahoma State Section 307, B, 1, and 7. I make a motion. We go into executive session. Second. Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero names. On the items in agenda number 12 uh, were discussed in executive session and no votes were taken. This will constitute the executive session minutes. Agenda item 12B. Did we do that already? No, we 12, didn't. 13. Go to 13. Agenda item 13, vote on the action is set out in personnel reports. I make a motion that we approve the personnel reports on page 129 of our iPads. 
Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. Agenda item 14, action upon recommending of extra duty assignments as listed in for 2016-2017. Make a motion we approve the extra duty assignments as listed in 2016-17, 130-131. Second. Any discussion? Please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I zero nays. Agenda item number 15. Recommendation consideration action to accept any resignations offered since the posting of the agenda. We have none. Agenda item 16. Discussion and possible action on new business not known about or could not have been reasonably foreseen at the time of the agenda posting. We have none. Agenda item 17. I think I must be a Second. Third. Roll call, please. Pennington. Yes. Smedley. Yes. Bennett Johnson. Yes. Davis. Yes. Salee. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Six I, zero nays. Agenda item 18. 